So our next presenter is joining from Canada. Francine, are you there? Yes, good morning. Sorry, I was muted on my phone. <laughs> <laughs> yes, hi. Uh, now we can hear you. <laughs> yes, yeah, so this uh, presentation will be given by Francine Kalundi from uh, Statistics Canada. Francine is an information and data architect for the Enterprise Architecture, Strategy and Innovation Division of Statistics Canada. GSIM has been uh, instrumental in enabling StackN to efficiently restructure their statistical concepts through the implementation of common information exchange models. So it is really early in the morning in Canada. Thank you very much for joining us. Please start when you are ready. Okay. Uh... okay. Yeah. Thank you. Okay. So this morning, I will be sharing with you uh, an application of GSIM at uh, Statistics Canada. This presentation is meant to be light and show the overall process of, of uh, how we uh, GSIM was applied up to the end product. So if you want further details on any t other topics I'll be talking about, do not hesitate to ask questions or contact us so we can uh, to our, try our best to uh, provide answers and uh, clarifications. The outline of my presentation uh, will be uh, showing how GSIM uh, is used as a framework for our reference models. Next, uh, I'll be uh, just giving you a synopsis of our implementation process. Then I'll be uh, presenting to you snapshots of our Picasso application. And then I will be talking about the benefits of using the GSIM model for us. So the layers of our information architecture. Based on the GSIM reference model, we built our semantic model, which we call the um, entity roadmap. It was in turn a reference model for implementing the logical models on which the uh, physical model was built. So the entity roadmap model that, sorry, statistics, Statistics Canada core statistical entities. It maps the main concepts needed to conduct statistical activities. It is designed to align with GSIM objects, sometimes with our own internal names, like that data asset uh, that uh, we use for GSIM dataset, uh, survey that we use for GSIM statistical program. And uh, next, our um, uh, Entity roadmap is broken down into domains for the logical level. So we have variable domain, data asset domain, etc. And here is our entity roadmap. Uh, for us, it, it is a good tool for talking with the business, uh, that along with the logical models. Um, the logical model has a good level of abstraction, and, but it has enough details. Um, such as objects, attributes, controlled vocabularies, multiplicities and uh, cardinalities to understand the content of uh, the application being built without knowing the technical aspect. So uh, next I'll be showing the elements that are part of the GSIM group. Here we find the, uh, in our value domain logical model, um, which would be uh, some elements of the concept group. Um, here we have our statistical activity domain model, domain logical model, which has some elements from the GSIM business group. And here we have some elements uh, that are part of, so the variable domain logical model, which are part of the GSIM uh, business group. So in this model, I'm just uh, demonstrating the objects from the GSIM group and uh, how they were used in our uh, variable domain logical model. So we have the concept here, which is uh, found in our variable domain logical model. We have the unit type, which you find here. We have the variable, which you find here the represented variable, which we find here. 
so when we look at the variable uh, domain logical model, we uh, see that we developed the objects, their attributes, and the links between the objects, but you can also see uh, in the model that we have in the little boxes some objects from the other domains. So what we've done is we just left the object as is and just show the links. So in this case, uh, we have an example of the value domain logical model with the links uh, to this uh, va variable domain model. And the details for the model are shown in the expanded model that we see here. We have the value domain logical model. Okay. So, um, the overview of uh, our process. So we start with the logical model. We have a physical model. We uh, develop some user stories, some operation definitions, UX designs, uh, a data access layer, some web services, and the UX implementation. Now, from the logical model was built, the physical model, almost in parallel, we had some operation definitions and the user stories. So the user stories drove uh, the design of the interface and also provided feedback to uh, updating the logical model, also the physical model. With the operation definition and the, the physical model, we built a data access layer. Which in turn, along with the operation definition, fed the uh, development of the, the web services. The UX design uh, was implemented. Uh, with uh, the web service. So that is uh, the overall process uh, uh, that we uh, followed for uh, building our application. Here I'm showing you an example of uh, our operation definitions. We started, uh, like we have two, three types of operation. One is a, a get entity, so let's say get variable, get representative variable, get concept. Uh, the other one would be a get entity summary, which would be in this case uh, the get variable summaries, and also get uh, entity series, which in uh, this example would be a get variable series or get uh, representative variable series. Now, the get entity, in this example, get variable, returns a single variable with all its attributes based on the uh, parameters that were provided. So it would be zero or one. And uh, the notes and the identifiers of the associations to the, the other related entities. The variable, uh, the get variable summary, get entity summary, return the uh, identifier of the entity and the summary attributes, the, say, the most recent version, the name, the description, etc. And the get variable series or get entity series, uh, which is our example is get variable series, returns a list of uh, versions of the specific variable. So the Picasso application. Picasso is a tool that was built with uh, the GSIM framework. Picasso is a Statistics Canada one-stop portal. It enables the management of uh, our data and statistical metadata. It is a tool for search and discovery of data assets and uh, statistical metadata. It was built on standards such as uh, and frameworks. So we have uh, GSIM for data and statistical metadata, we used uh, ISO 31179 for registration process and some pro pro provo terms for tracking provenance information. So here I have uh, uh, 
an example of uh, a search that was uh, generated with uh, the Picasso application. I entered a uh, wage and uh, I had a list of results. And with that list, I clicked on the variable to refine, to refine my search. So I just wanted to know wages for variables. And uh, this is the list that was returned. And I clicked on variable weekly wage of employed person. And this is what I got on the next screen. So it gives me some detailed information on the weekly wage of an employed person. So the detail gives uh, the description, gives you the description on the con concept and the unit type, as uh, those are the two items that compose the variable that are measured by the variable. Now, there are other information uh, at the bottom, but I can't see them like to have the effective period. You also have, uh, I believe, the represented variable. I can't remember. <laughs> I don't have the screen in front of me. So in the next tab, I wanted to see uh, the entities that are related to my, uh, my variable. So I have a concept, which, which we saw in the details. I have the unit. Um, and I have a classification, representative variables, we have data. So when I click on the classification, this is what I get. So this is the classification that's related to this variable. So I click on uh, the version which I want to see, and on the next screen, I get the classification, classification structure of my variable. So we can see how the, uh, in the logical model we had the relationships. We can see how now the relationship is translated in our um, um, interface. So for us, the benefits of using um, the GSIM model. GSIM has uh, helped in the harmonization of our statistical metadata. So we have a higher interpretability and coherence, which is uh, 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 promoted by the use of a common information language, a common information model. And of course, the common language would lead to a common solution. So the development of uh, uh, the web services has increased the uh, interoperability. And also, we've seen an increase in the visibility of our administrative data. Um, that being part of uh, our modernization, you know, the support of using the alternative sources. So we see that GSIM has been um, really a solid framework for representing our uh, administrative metadata, you know, with data, uh, data sets, provision agreements, protocol, agent, et cetera. Those are the different objects that uh, enabled us, uh, that enable us to, uh, that we used to represent our administrative uh, um, data. And we also have links to different, uh, to, to different standards like DDI, STMX, uh, that are used for our micro and aggregate data. Now, somebody asked how uh, the links are made. Now, the um, uh, when you when we look, unfortunately, I don't have the model that I uh, to show you. But um, the let me see if I can go back. I'm just going to go back because I saw that question this morning. So when we see the link to our data asset and you have the, the data structure. So at the data structure is where we uh, specify whether we have a, a unit data structure or um, a dimensional data structure. Now this is where we make the connection with our data sets that are either in a DDI format or a TMX format. Uh, DDI format for the uh, micro data uh, unit uh, unit data structures and uh, uh, a TMX for our um, dimensional data sets. I need to go back to my slide again at the end. But the last point is that uh, now for us, uh, 
mapping the objects, uh, sometimes the presented challenges. But what I found that was very helpful with GSM is having the definitions, the descriptive text, the examples, and we also have uh, the GSM community where we can report issues and there's a going word to try to resolve and improve. So. Uh, that I found really helpful and uh, also internally to limit uh, misinterpretation and uh, ambiguity. Uh, we provide descriptions with our objects uh, and um, definitions. So uh, with that, I will end my presentation. Okay, thank you, Francine, for the presentation. Yeah, I think these two presentations really show how GSIM is being used in practice and the real benefits of using the model that are experienced by different organizations. And thank you for also answering the relation between uh, GSIM and uh, how, how GSIM is used with the connection with STMX.